Uh, hi guys. Um, as quite a few of you would, um, are interested in the i5 13500 uh, CPU, so I I think maybe I should uh, produce uh, updates as as quick as possible. And what I did is that I installed that CPU on my wife's uh, PC, and I asked her for her experience and and so on. Okay, and also did a meter analysis, basically analyze of um, existing data that I can find. And but before going going through the meter analysis, let me just go through um, just show you a picture, uh, a photo of the PC that I built for my wife. Um, so this is the PC. Um, I thought about uh, installing the Intel cooler on this PC, but Afterward, I thought because I'm sitting next to her, uh, I don't want the noise. I don't mind the heat, but I don't want the noise. Um, so I think maybe I just just continue using the natural cooler that I purchased last time. So in this setup, the the noise is not audible at all. So sitting in the room. All I can I can hear are noise from outside, like uh, birds, um, fans in other room, other rooms, like a washing machine and things like that. But I can't hear anything from the the PC. Um, the reason being is, um, as you can see, the heat sink in this case is quite substantial. If you compare that one to the Intel. Heat sink. The Intel heat sink might, um, if we just use the weight, it might be only maybe at most ten percent. I think. Okay. So um, by using this setup, it's just like a silent PC. And also the the power supply is um, ATX three point zero. So it has a switch. So basically, if the system consumption is below a threshold, I think that threshold is 30%, um, the fan of the power supply will not spin. So in that case, there's no moving parts in this, uh, this system. The CPU fans spin very, very slowly, and the power supply fan might spin but might not spin. So you can't hear anything from the system. Um, but anyhow, um, I did produce a video of building this system. So I will try to upload that video as soon as possible and provide you guys with a link. So if you guys are interested in how I build this system, you can check that out. Um, so regarding the performance, for my wife, she can't tell any difference between 13500 um, versus 13600K because she was using 13600K for a while. Um, but, in, but in that case, I actually um, set the power limit down um, in order to um, save power or also maybe try to reduce the noise. But I don't know whether that noise factor is, um, is an issue or not because the heat sink is quite substantial. Um, but but in any case, that she can't tell any difference. I can explain to you later why that's the case by referring to my meter analysis. Um, okay, uh, to repeat, so if you guys are interested in how I build this system, check out later, I will up upload that video um, soon, so you can see the steps I go through to build this system. So maybe just add one more thing. Um, the reason I use an open bench because with the open bench the air is flow is flowing freely, so you don't have extra fans and the temperature of all the components should be lower. Um, so in this case, there are only two fan, fans. One one is for the CPU, the other one is for the power supply. So both of them are operating at a very low level, hence that that's 
noise performance really good. Okay, uh, that's about it for the, um, for the experience. Let's just go straight to the meter analysis. Okay, as, as I showed you in the beginning, here's the meter analysis. Uh, let's just go through a benchmark, Cinebench R23. So we just use one benchmark. I know it's not representative, but we just use a benchmark to, as a proxy to gauge the performance of the CPU. Um, as you can see, i5-13500, it's only 5% less than 13600K in terms of single thread performance. But with the multi-threading, it's much lower, like a 17.3% lower. Okay. And but if we compare those uh, scores with Ryzen 7 uh, 7700X, actually the performances are quite similar. Okay. The single threaded performance might be um, less than 5% lower. But the multi-threaded performance is higher, okay? It's higher than that. It's, um, it could be, let me think, it could be more than 2%, yeah. And in terms of TDP, the 13500 um, is half of the, the TDP of um, 13600K. Okay, which is nice. That's why we when I installed thirteen five hundred on my on my wife's system, I did not I did not change any power setting. Okay, so basically that just just work because it by by default it uses a low power. Okay, and with the with the Ryzen, okay. TDP is 105 watts, okay. So it's higher than 13500, and but the performance roughly similar to 13500, okay. And if we compare with the cores, the 13500 is has the same configuration of 13600K. Um, basically, six performance cores, like a big cores plus eight efficient core cores. Okay, and with the Ryzen, just conventional cores like a eight bit cores, and in terms of threads, the performance cores, uh, each core has two can, um, I think has has two threads, so six six times two twelve plus eight, twenty threads. Same with thirteen six hundred K twenty threads, and with the Ryzen, that's a a H times two sixteen threads. Okay, and regarding the price, so I those values are uh, are the are the prices that I can find today, like now. Okay, in Australia. So with these these two models, the thirteen six hundred K and uh, Ryzen seven thousand seven thousand seven hundred X. They already reduced the prices <laughs> quite a lot, okay. Um, especially for Ryzen, but in any case, if you compare the launch price of thirteen five hundred five hundred versus the other two, um, this one is roughly 16 percent lower than the thirteen six hundred K. So this number match the multi-threaded performance, okay. And, and if we compare this one with the Ryzen, that's 21% lower. So you get lower price, lower TDP, roughly the same performance and with much capable of iGPU because the iGPU is um, it's quite valuable. The Intel iGPU has codecs, so that's utilized by um, Adobe products. Um, that's quite useful and that, that can speed up things quite a lot. Okay. So much, much more value than the Ryzen one and much more, much lower price. I also need to mention to you with my wife's system, um, 
that motherboard uses DDR4. So if you account for that, um, the total system price is much lower. You can buy DDR4 memory at much lower price. Uh, anyhow, I got those numbers from uh, Guru 3D. So the, the article date is uh, 5th of uh, December. And the other two numbers, um, the other two um, columns of data are from Tech Power Up. Okay. And we also need to mention that the 13500 also contains a, a cooler. So if you can buy, if you, if if you can buy a CPU without the cooler, you might save maybe ten to twenty dollars. Okay, so which which is quite significant, and also you will bring your system cost down a bit more. Okay, and regarding the noise power and temperature, um, because I I don't want to go through the trouble to try the included included um, cooler. So I just did a meter analysis. Uh, I will put down the link of uh, another YouTuber. Uh, his name is, his channel name is Tech ES City. And, but I will summarize his founding regarding uh, those three points, okay. Um, I will put his link down in my description. So basically, uh, with the Intel cooler, if you go, if you try to run the CPU at full low, um, the power consumption can go higher. I think it's because um, when the chip is running at high temperature, the 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 power profile is different, so it becomes less efficient. Hence, it draws much more power. Okay, and also it has much higher noise level at full load and much higher temperature profile at full low. That's with the stock cooler. So that's the cooler that I have, okay. But, it's a big but, if you do normal computing, I guess most people, if you do Excel, um, browsing, uh, gaming, and, and so on, so you won't stress the CPU, like running all the cores, all the threads, and uh, constantly. If you're not like that, then it's okay. The uh, It's quite okay for gaming. Um, the noise level is significantly less noisy than at full low, okay. So the short summary is that at idle, 28 dB, like uh, very, very quiet, so when you do gaming, like or normal computing, it's 34 dB, okay. So also not high and also quite low. Only when you stress test the CPU, okay, it's at 49 dB, that's quite noticeable, okay. But in my case, I would just try to be as silent as possible, so I just use the that natural cooler. I know it's an overkill, but I think you can do some optimization. Like you can buy a bigger heat sink, like at a lower cost, and maybe the including fa included fence is uh, very quiet already. Or if not, you just pair with a very quiet fan that that would do the job. It's significantly lower temperature and lower the noise. Um, yeah. Um, that's about it. I think in general, it's a, it's a very good purchase, especially for my wife, because my wife is using this one for development. So later on, when, she do, when she's doing um, compiling, um, I guess you will utilize multiple cores and it might stress the CPU a bit, but I don't know. Um, it, let's, let's just see later. Um, but having a bigger cooler, it will reduce the noise. But I think the stock cooler will also work because you don't you don't do compi compiling twenty four hours like uh, or doing uh, any editing twenty four hours. You just do that for a short amount of time. Just that period may be a bit noisy, but for all other periods like browsing the web and doing Excel and things like that, it's quiet. So I think the stock cooler is okay. So if, 
if that's what you want, you can save quite a bit of money. And so you you buy the CPU for uh, 420 Australian dollars, and you you pair that one with the um, mid-range motherboard and like a good enough power supply and DDR4 memory that that's quite low and um, in general I would recommend buying the 13500 yeah you know the reason why my wife said the she doesn't notice any performance um, degradation is because the single thready performance is only 5% lower so obviously for most applications you the single threaded uh, performance is the most important thing so hence you don't th see any difference I, I want to address another point some people might say what about the Ryzen V cache yeah that might increase the gaming uh, quite a bit but who how many people can see the difference of game running at 500 frames per second but no but no one can um, or very few people can distinguish that uh, uh, like uh, videos at at that speed okay so usually for human eyes I think 100 frames per second is good enough okay even the VR headsets they they set those targets so going higher it's uh, I don't think that's necessary so so in that case I don't see the need of vcache okay and but I do see the need for for me at least the i5 13500 13500 because they include the iGPU I can really use that for um, for some work and for all other applications the single thread performance high enough and to do those jobs as quickly as possible also, I need to mention that um, with the vCache version, the the CPU clock is clocked much lower. Um, it's roughly 10% lower. So in that case, for some applications, it will be slower than 13500K. So my view is that I don't, at least for me, I don't see a need for vCache for the, for the 7000 generation. Okay, that's the end of this video. Um, thanks guys for watching. Um, please support the channel um, like by subscribing the channel or cl click likes, okay? So if you do those kind of things, it will help the channel to grow. Um, anyhow, thanks guys, see you.